You know, this is the beginning of a year. New years are always a bit fresh start. New year resolutions. And I thought about a fresh start in our Christian life for 2021. We're talking about fresh starts. I did something this morning, which some of you maybe noticed, some of you didn't. They don't start staring at my face and putting it big on the telly, but I changed my appearance slightly. First time ever I've did this for as long as I can remember. So some of you will be scratching your heads saying, which John done? I've not had a facelift. Doctor told me I didn't need one. Says you're too far gone. So I've not had a facelift friend like that, but I, I changed something about my appearance this morning. Just changed it for some reason. I just changed it. And here we are. I thought I'd mention it. Uh, it's a fresh start. It's not a great fresh start, a spiritual fresh start, but I changed my appearance very slightly. I asked John and Lewis if he could see it, and they were next to me, and it took them a wee while. It took them a wee while before the guests, before it struck with them, and they've known me a long, long time. So there we are. I just thought I would mention that. You can do things sometimes, even the smallest things, and if you apply that spiritually, you can even do the smallest things spiritually for a fresh start. So how about a fresh start as a Christian in 2021? A new beginning. You know, sometimes perhaps as a bit of backsliding has come into our life and that can happen. Well, we still can go to church. Went to church in 2020 and we can still go to church and still go to the Lord's Supper. Still do all that. Still go to the prayer meeting. We can still be a little bit backsliding, not just entering the same way into the things of God, no find that perhaps we've been a bit legal in coming, we've found that hard coming and going and sometimes, you know, and but it's good, you know, that people still come to the house of God irrespective of the reason. And sometimes setbacks, maybe in the previous year, setbacks can put us into a bondage and setbacks that we can feel will fail the Lord. And these things, these things perhaps have enslaved us and it does, it enslaves us a little bit. You know, maybe perhaps not enjoying the Christian life the way we should. You know, the, as the devil's work, the devil doesn't want God's people to enjoy their Christian life. No doubt about that. He wants to put us in bondage. His whole aim is to cast us down at times, to stop us from serving the Lord. He knows if we're the people of God, he can never stop that. But he can stop the rejoicing, he can stop the power of the church. He can't stop that. And how he loves to have God's people cast down, full of unbelief, and sometimes find it hard to pray, but they find it hard to praise them. Uh, now, I don't belittle these things about people having problems being cast down. I don't belittle that by any means. And we continue to pray, but it's sometimes good to start saying, look, one thing we must, let's move into a new year. You know, a preacher, I was reading a preacher the other day, and he says one thing, he says, we must make peace with our past. And one thing he mentioned that was very good, he says, that includes forgiving others. Sometimes you don't forgive, that can cause a problem. And you'll take the same problems into a new year. Because unforgiveness can create other problems in your Christian life. And sometimes if, if, you, if you take... Uh, uh, if you take an unforgiving spirit into the new year, your problems will still be the same. So it's, can, these problems can always start. It's various things like that. And we say, well, look, let's have a, a new beginning, 2021. The guy's forgiveness, a little scripture in Matthew section 14, Jesus says, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you, but if you forgive men not the trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. But the verse I'd like to dwell on, as we go into the verse now, is verse 10. Is verse 10 of John 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life and it might have it more abundantly. It's the second part of that verse. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. 
then the writer then goes on to tell us that there's an, uh, there's an adversary. In fact, we mentioned that at the beginning of the verse, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill. But I have come that you might have life. You know, it's a tremendous promise. I have come that you might have life and life more abundant. And we take that promise and we believe that, that God has given us abundant life and that thrills our soul and you let it thrill your soul and you let it thrill your way of being and you take that into the year 2021. Take the blessings, take the positive things, not the negative things. You've got to... Sometimes it's good to look back, but sometimes to look back to that which has caused problems, that's how I mentioned forgiveness and all that, we've got to look forward. A little verse in Isaiah 43 and 18. Isaiah 43 and 18 is a little, little verse, and I'll explain it later on in, the, in, the, in, the, in a short time, few minutes' time. It says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Now that relates to the people of God who were in bondage. They were in bondage, uh, but they were going to miraculously be taken back to uh, their own country. They were in Babylon. And this, the writer says, and look, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. We're going forward. You see, it's a new year. It's a new start as Christian, but it also can be a new start for becoming a Christian. Many of you don't know Christ can turn to the Lord Jesus Christ this very day. You know, a little saying says, if you continue to look behind, you can't see where you're going. If you continue to look back, you can't see where you're going, you'll stumble. If we're going to move on to new things in Christ, we must press on. Philippians 3 and 14, the Apostle Paul speaking of that little verse when he says, press on towards a mark. Press on towards a mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The Christian life is all about going forward. It's not remaining still sometimes or even going back, which is worse. It's going forward all the time. You see, it's so easy to dwell on the past. An old guy like me can dwell in the past and old people like me say, oh, things were not what they used to be. And you hear that so often, but we've got to keep going forward all the time. This is now 2021, a new year. A new year for new beginnings. And let's look forward that God will bless us in 2021. Oh, he's blessed us in the past, but he'll really bless us. Will this be the year of revival? Will this be the year of having a new pastor, a new man of God in Zion Baptist Church? You know, when it when says that verse in Isaiah 43, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. As it says, these verses were uttered but it was of the prophet when Israel were in captivity for many years. You're always going to change. There's going to be a dramatic change. Ezra and Nehemiah and others like that were going to be used by God to take them back into their own land, to take them from Babylon into their own land. So the little verse that we looked at, verse John 10 and 10, I have come that they might have life and that may have it more abundantly. Abundantly. Not word abundantly means extremely plentiful. So the word of God, Jesus saying, I've come that ye might have life more ex extremely, more abundantly. You may have this wonderful life. You know, the world, the world in general, think the Christian leads a boring life. The thing he leads a life of inhibition. I think he leads a life of bondage, sitting out his years in gloom, always cowering in fear of, a, of an angry God. But that's not the thing. Jesus says, I have come to might of life and life more abundantly, might more extremely, life more plentifully. The Christian life is a happy life, overflowing with abundant things of God, 
oh brothers and sisters, 2020 is finished. Let's press on towards the mark of the high calling. Did not Jesus come to give us this abundant life and life more abundant? You know, this world is held captive by the God of this world. What is this world's abundant life? How did they come into the new year? Many of them would be a time of drinking. If there had been no, if there been no restrictions, it would have been parting, it had been all sorts of carry-ons in the streets. But you know, and what we, what, they look forward to sensations, new sensations coming upon them, but the Christian, the Christian brothers and sisters, we can look forward to new experiences in Christ, knowing him more and more. Has he not come to give his life and life more abundant? You know that lovely verse, which is a well-known verse in John 14 and 6. He says, look, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. What a way, what a truth, what a life, a life in Christ. You know, it's not until you look back. I was thinking last night, actually, of people particular people I'd met, it led you, guided you in the sense that even although they were unconverted, but you end up in a particular area, a particular place that you heard the word of God. Perhaps working beside someone who was a Christian, perhaps changing job and getting into a new job beside a person who was a Christian, and that was a means that God was used. And you look back, we stand in amazement even these small things. So God, the Lord is saying, I've come that you might have life and you might have this life more abundant. And as we go into the year 2021, I'm not saying totally forget about what happened in the past, but any of the, any of the negatives, to leave them behind and try and take the positives. That's why I gave you a verse, which is a very, very, positive verse that you might have life and life more abundantly. Think of it, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It doesn't matter what age, doesn't matter what position, right? He is the way, and he has come to give life more abundant. So I thought I would do that as a little introduction, abundant life. And from the end of the time, I'll take the word life, and I'll do a little across state, which I sometimes do across state. So I'm going to do uh, the, the word on a cross day. The L will stand for light. So life on the word that will take life and we'll do the letters of it. L will be light. I will be identity. Three will be friend. And four will be eternal. And that spells life. Light, L for light, John 8 and 12. That beautiful, lovely verse in John 8 and 12. Oh, how we love that verse. It's a verse sometimes we can give to new believers, give to Christians. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Is this not truly life when we have the light of the world? Him who is a mighty God who says, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall walk in the light of life. You know, this world of darkness, amidst the terrible darknesses which we have had and we have, we've had for centuries and years, especially this past year, the COVID virus, much suffering for people we don't under. We don't undermine that at all, much suffering. The economy will suffer, there's no doubt about that. Some people think because they're not going to have, any, not going to have much holiday this year, they're going to suffer because of that. The world will think that no pubs, no restaurants, we're going to suffer. Oh my, I can't get my nails done. I'll not get my nails done, can't get my hair done. No gyms, no pre -mark. Oh, the young people will panic. No prima. No, the last time was a shutdown and they opened the shops again. I happened to go down to the town centre where I live, East Cobride, and there's a prima there. And goodness me, they take the queues was unbelievable. It was, I don't know how long it went for it. They had to keep snaking it and you put in barriers so people wouldn't sneak, sneak into the crowd. 
to get any prima. Oh, their day was now, their life is complete, said prima. I have come that you might have life and life more abundant. You know, some people in the days of poverty had nothing, but when they had Christ, that was more than life because of his life abundant. You see, amidst all the darkness, we have Christ. We have the light, which is Christ, speaking of light in a dwelling place. That's Exodus 10 and 23. Remember, and God's people amidst all the darkness around about Egypt and all the rest that went out, uh, one of the great plagues of darkness came. It says the people of God had light in their dwelling places. We have Jesus, who is light, and who is light. Who oh, is he not the word of life and light? I have come that you might have life. I want you to grasp this little verse. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly abundantly, more extremely. Psalm 119, a little verse, which is a lovely little famous verse of mine. I, I love it to bits. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. That's the word, the living word of God. The living word as a light unto our path. Isaiah 60 and 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Oh, hallelujah. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You know, we have the glory of God upon us. We've got Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's the glory of God. That's the light. Oh, I have come, thee might have life. See the life Jesus gives us. says in the beginning of John, the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then it speaks in verse 5, it says, and the light shineth in the darkness. This is the light, this is the word, this is Jesus. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness couldn't overcome the light. Brothers and sisters, can we grasp that? The darkness couldn't overcome the light. As what Christians, and we've got the light of Christ, the darkness cannot overcome the light we have. Cannot. Impossible. It tries to. The prince of darkness, this world tries to engulf us in darkness all the time, brings in all sorts of negative thoughts, brings all darkness into life, but we cannot over that, darkness cannot overcome the light which is Christ. Remember as we enter 2021, we have the true light of the world. First John 1 and 7, another lovely little verse. And John says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we'll fellowship one with the other. But the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanses us from all sin. If we walk in the light as he is in the light. Psalm 89 and 15, a lovely, lovely little verse. 18 and 15, it's all about walking in the light. Blessed is that people who know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Our blessed, it's what it means is blessed are those who have learned to acclaim God. Those who want to acclaim God as Lord will walk in the light of his presence. Oh, let us enter 2021 in the light as he is in the light. You know, when we walk with Christ in his light, of his love. You know, we enjoy mutual fellowship with Jesus, the same with the Father. We enjoy this wonderful mutual fellowship with the Father. The more we walk in the light, the more we walk each day in the light, who has a light of his word, the more like Jesus we become. It's walking in the light of his word. Oh, brothers and sisters, I know it's a dark world at times. 
but we must walk in his light because he is the real light of this world. John 12 and 35 says, the lovely little verse, John 12 and 35 says, walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not where he's going. If you're in darkness, you don't know where you're going, but walk in the light as he is in the light. By brethren, by following the light, which is Jesus. We will move in the right direction. You won't always see the steps in front of you. When you walk in the light, as he is in the light, you'll be walking in the right direction. You may not always see all the steps in front of you, but you know he is a light. It's walking in his light. That brings us to the eye. So with the light, with life, first letter light, now we've got identity or identify. Because of the light, because of I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly, it means that we can identify or Christ identifies with us. First John 3 and 2. First John 3 and 1. First, I'll look at 3 and 1 first. It says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And then it says in verse 2, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, what we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, conform to the image of Christ. When John spoke to his father in John 17 and verse 24, he says, Father, I will that they whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. We may behold my glory, we see his glory, see his light, see his person. You know, when you enter into sonship as sons of God, you've been conformed to the image of Christ. Therefore, therefore we identify ourselves with them. Ephesians 4 and 13, it says, till we all come. And the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, a perfect man unto the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ. Be conformed to his image. Oh, I have come that you might have life and life more abundant. Isn't that a lovely verse to be with us in the new year? And it's some life he gives us sons of God, or oh, the dignity which is ours, the dignity and the honour, and how thankful we are and how grateful that we've entered 2021 as sons of God. You be grateful. You be grateful you've entered 2021 as sons of God. Philippians 3 and 20 says, Paul speaks about change and he says, who shall change our vile bodies that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, conform to him, will be identified with him. You know, from a moment of conversion, the believer is on a journey. It's a period process of sanctification. As we pursue Christ's likeness, and that's the whole purpose, and Paul exerts us to press on towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, until we shall see him as he is. And ultimate one day we will enter into glory. You know, as we progress in the Christian life, as we follow his light, we are being identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I have come that you might have life and life more abundant. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a lovely promise in which we know to take into, us, into this new year? So we looked at light, identity, and the F in life now speaks of friend. Oh, he's a light of the world. We can have his identity, Christ in us, the hope of glory. But this is amazing, unbelievable. He is a friend. A friend that sticks with close on the brother. John 15, verse 15. He says, Henceforth 
I call you not servants. That some time could, could mean, I call you not slaves, I call you not servants. For a servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. Friends, for, verse 14, it simply says to his followers, ye are my friends. You know, these are the words of Jesus to his, to his friend, the disciples who followed him. Though he knew, although he knew he would be denied by one of them and abandoned by the most of them, he still calls them his friend. That's beautiful. Oh, brethren, this is a real friend who says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Although at times we can treat him shabbily, we can treat him not very nice, he still calls us his friends. Jesus, who it says of Jesus in John 1 and 3, all things were made by him and for him. It was not anything made that was made. He calls us, he says, ye are my friend. He's called the mighty God, the everlasting father in Isaiah 9, the prince of peace, he says, Ye are my friends. John 17 and 8 says, Ye are my friends, because he had made known unto us the things that he heard from his Father. When John 17 is making, us, making known things to us through the word, the things that he's heard from his Father, and that's what he reveals to us because we are his friends. Lovely to say, so down to earth, isn't there that little statement? It's so personal, so lovely, so humbling. Ye are my friends. What a friend we have in Jesus, as a hymn writer says. What does it feel to be like a friend of Jesus? You know, people can, I mentioned this before, people can boast of perhaps being an old friend or an old school friend of someone who maybe became some sort of celebrity. I know about two became a sort of celebrity in Scotland anyway, eh, who were school friends of mine. Just two, but Jesus calls us his friend. Jesus is a friend of sinners. You know, the world doesn't call him their friend. Do we tell people he is our friend? Do we tell men and women, when we, do we tell them Jesus as a friend, and we are a friend of Jesus. So we looked at life, I have come, you might have life, and life more abundant from that. We looked at light, identity, friends. And finally, the last word, the E, is eternal. So we come in at John 10 and 10, I have come, you might have life, and life more abundant. What greater abundant life can Jesus give us but eternal life? Verse 20 of John 10. John 20 of John 10. And I shall give unto them eternal life. I shall give unto them eternal life. His friends. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. It says in 1 John 5 and 11, and this is a record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that believe in the Son hath everlasting life. John 3 and 36. Oh, we came in at that verse, didn't we? I have come the might of life, and life more abundantly. And we looked at light, identity, or identify, friends, eternal life. Now the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 4, I learn what sort of state I am of learn with to be content. Now what was Paul's, called the great jewel of Christian contentment, what was Paul contentment in you, Christ? I have come that you might have life and life more abundant. He'd come to know the Savior, perhaps as the verse says, he'd come to know abundant life. Oh, he thought he'd life as a very religious man, but he came to know the real life. 
which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now my time's nearly over. Brothers and sisters, as we begin a new year, remember that little verse, he has come to give us life and life more abundantly. Now the world wonders what life is all about. The world, often the world says, oh, what's life all about? You say to them, well, I'll tell you what it's all about. It's all about abundant life. It's all about eternal life. It's all about knowing the friend of publicans and sinners. He gives us his life. Oh, hallelujah. What can I say now? What more can I say but the final verse, which is the verse I started with. I'm repeating it for about, I think, the tenth time. I have come that you might have life and life more abundant. I pray you'll take that little verse as a verse into 2021. He's given us abundant life and abundant life more than enough, abundant everything which is in Christ. I pray that God would bless these few thoughts to you. Amen and amen. Thank you.